are not that against uh, geocentrism or, or whatever other. So yeah, that includes no spinning and, either, right? So it's just uh, geocentric, and there's a conspiracy to make us think that we're actually that stars are aren't moving, and it's actually us moving. But yeah, so oh, you, geocentrism, you, you know, it's there's no there's no rotation, right? No, there could be. You can have a, a geocentric rotating Earth, but it's not moving. It's just rotating. I don't really think that's workable, is it? Well, okay. that's more workable than a stationary uh, oblate sphere, because a stationary oblate sphere, uh, the, the verticals, uh, let's say at 45 degrees latitude, they wouldn't be perpendicular to the surface on an oblate spheroid. But with a rotating spheroid, then you add the centrifugal forces and then they would. So you have is coil and you have the centrifugal force of one a rotating spheroid, and w which I think makes it a better model than just a stationary globe. Because I, I think that, uh, well, I mean, not really because there's no, like the idea that there's no movement is like the thing you get to, you get to like, oh, great, okay, yeah, it makes sense we're not moving at all. Right, that's what you get with geocentrism. Because then giving that up would really relieve you, and like everything else, you have to like try to say it's happening, it's not happening. Like planes oh, not no. landing on a, you know, all that kind of stuff. Ge geocentrism is simple that the Earth is in the center. Uh, geocentrism itself doesn't necessarily need to be stationary Earth. If you have a geocentric I know Earth, that, that's but I'm that's like, geocentric. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying if you're saying that one word better than the other well just the fact that we do not detect movement planes wouldn't be able to land when they're going over a tangential gradient they would have to be in perfect sync all that kind of stuff would be like not a problem for you if it's just a stationary earth but on the stationary earth then you have other problems I, I, by the way i don't think those problems you mentioned are actually problems um, but even if i grant you that they were then you have other problems on a known rotating uh, Earth, because then you don't really have like a mechanism for stuff like uh, Coriolis. Uh, the, the changes what Coriolis? In, uh, that's a good. That's my point. There's no Coriolis, bro. Come on. What about the the pendulum? <laughs> yeah, that's sidereal rotation. We have an ether. Well, can you explain how that works? I don't know exactly how it works, but it's picking up the sidereal rotation, whatever the trans transit of uh, you know movement that's detected within the environment from whatever's moving the stars that answers the question, whatever it is. It doesn't affect plumb lines, but affect pendulums. That doesn't seem to be strong enough for the. It has to be very sensitive equipment, I guess. But the, pl the, pl the pendulums, they have to be started anyway, right? I mean, you can see the 15-degree the rotation with the three-ring laser gyro, which is extra sensitive. Yeah, well, you, sh well, you think on a spinning globe, you should expect pendulums to simply start on their own? No, but I, I don't think they go forever anyway. They have to have motors and stuff like that. So if it was the movement of and the no Earth, it would, just be, it would be perpetual. They would just keep... P pendulums wouldn't go forever in any type of Earth. The Earth doesn't have anything to do with pendulums stopping eventually. It has to do with the friction of the of the string. In the area. Okay, well that's fine. Either way, it's it's we're, we're, as far as the three ring laser gyro and fifteen degrees, all that could be chalked up to some uh, type of force that we're you know unfamiliar with or have lost the knowledge. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, you're left with that kind of appeal. You have to appeal, okay, there might be a mechanism that we don't know of. But if you have a rotating globe, that rotation itself already gives you all the mechanisms for all those effects. Well, convenient. Why, so, uh, but, then, but then we're left with all of the, the fact that there's no movement. I mean, there's absolutely no movement. We're not freaking moving. And planes wouldn't be able to land. I'm not going to get into that right now. But we, they... I, I disagree with that. And we talked about that many well, times. Well, you know, they would have to, okay, so, but yeah, the, the plane would have to be in perfect sync with the eastward rotation, right, to treat it as stationary. It would have to be in perfect sync, right? 
Oh, a perfect sink would mean the airplane isn't moving at all relative to the surface. That's obviously not happening. Right. As, no, it has to be moving with the surface. Uh, a plane is moving with the surface. It's yeah, simply right. stationary it's for an observer. The exact same rate. I think you're picturing a helicopter, not an airplane. Uh, an airplane no, is always no, moving no. across the surface. Airplane, airplane has to be moving eastward with the exact same rate of the rotation as it's landing. I think you're picturing a, a plane that is landing in the northwards or southwards direction. Well, no, if it was if it was landing and it is wasn't it, it, its tangential velocity wasn't the same as the tangential velocity of the rotation, it couldn't treat the Earth as stationary when it's landing. That's as simple as that, dude. Oh, and if it could be it, landing at uh, any angle, it could be landing at uh, any angle. By the way, no, no. I mean, if uh, if the airplane is landing at the equator and it's landing from east to west, for example. It obviously, it's not going to be in sync with the velocity of the ground because it's going to be, it's flying. So it's by definition a different uh, velocity as the ground. It wouldn't be in sync. It shouldn't okay. be. In sync. Yeah. So it does okay, matter. So how, does, how does it get in sync then? How does it get in sync to land? It only gets a completely in sync when it's stationary on the ground. When it, it fully broke, the, the it fully stopped. That's when it's actually. So you're saying, so then you're saying it has to it has to move with the eastward rotation as it's landing. When the wheels of the airplane is on the ground, the airplane is still moving until it completely stops. So right, when I'm talking about just the eastward vector. The ground, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about the plane's vector. I'm not talking about the plane's vector. I'm talking about its eastward vector. It has to have a separate vector eastward with the rotation. That's why so I that said it can land I, on the stationary ground. That's why I said you're, prob you're probably picturing a north-to-south landing, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in that case, okay. sure, the, 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 the airplane yeah. is going to have to be very closely yeah. the same east and west. No, not very closely. Not. Exactly. Not very closely. Well, not exactly. exactly. If it's, uh, yes, a, centimeter exactly. Per, if it's if a centimeter per hour... Stationary. If it's going to treat the Earth as stationary when it's landing, it has to be stationary relative to the Earth moving eastward. I'm not sure if you have seen planes landing, but uh, well, the wind is not the same. Like if it's being blown by wind, if it's being blown by wind, that's one thing. If it's being blown by wind and having to land on a moving surface, that'd be two things. Okay, obviously, it doesn't have to be a perfect sink if it's. Uh, if it has a sideward velocity of, let's say, a centimeter per hour, that's obviously not going to prevent the airplane from landing. That's not even going to be noticeable. So it's a question of how much, right? Well, the ground's not moving separately from the plane when the plane lands on it. Do you agree with that? Uh, what do you mean moving separately? Moving is moving. Well, is there any, is there there any moving. kind of like variation? Oh, wait, wait, we got to wait. We got to catch up eastward with this rotation. We got to make the plane go sideways a little faster so that we can land on the Earth without breaking the wheels off. Is that, that ever an occurrence? Okay, so you're talking about when the airplane is not didn't get to that point yet. So let's say the airplane is still in the in the middle of the the, the way. So it, its east and west velocity is not the same as where it's landing, right? That's yeah, before it, it gets. Took from a, it took off from a place where it had less tangential velocity. Somehow you're going to have to imagine that it has the same tangential velocity when it gets to the equator. It has an extra twice as fast sideways <laughs> tangential velocity, which is impossible anyway. It doesn't happen on its own. It wouldn't happen on its own. The, plane, the pilot's not taught to do it. So therefore, it, regardless of how that happens, even if, it, if your idea of the atmosphere doing it, with it, the atmosphere acting on it like a wind, even though it's not a wind and the winds are blowing in opposite directions, None of that makes sense, so that's all contradiction and out the window. But even if there were a mechanism that you could name that makes the plane twice as fast sideways by the time it gets to the equator, it has to be continue moving in that vector eastward as it's slowing to a land in a perpendicular direction or some kind of various angle. It might even have to be going backwards and sideways at some various angle to keep up with the eastward rotation in a perfect one-to-one -one relationship so that it can always land on what, it's, what, the, what we all know is a stationary ground. If the ground were moving ever slightly, even just slightly, we would be able to know that it's moving eastward at a different rate than the plane is moving eastward. Therefore, we know the, the fucking Earth isn't moving, because planes will land all the time, never have to worry about the ground moving even slightly 
eastward compared to their own eastward movement. Oh, let me answer movement. your first claims before you get to a conclusion, because you said there should there has to be a, like a continuous mechanism. As a continuous mechanism, it's called the airplane is being piloted, right? It's being controlled by so someone that's so trying to follow a great circle so around. Okay, so the pilot's making it go backwards and sideways when it has to land at a weird angle so that it can no, keep they're... up with the eastward rotation? Are you saying that's what's going on? Come on. That's not what I said. Don't put words in my mouth. What the, air, the pilot is trying to do is to try to, it's trying to follow a great circle around. So it's trying to follow a certain path. When it's off the path, okay. then it, it goes back to the path. It can get off the path because sure of can. a million things, because a well, it can turbine get off the path. aren't working. A turbine aren't working. It can do whatever. It has method. to happen. There's a, there's a storm that could be off the path. Just, uh, lots of times it could be off the path. Before there was yeah. any kind of path to follow, they just flew wherever they wanted and landed on the earth like it was stationary. Path doesn't do it. Yeah, they don't randomly pick a direction and go without ever checking if they're still going that direction. They have to continuously sure. check if they're not drifting away. And there are many things that... Continuously check for what? Continuously check yeah. for the movement of the Earth compared to their own movement eastward? Do they ever check That's for that? That's not what I said. No. What do they, what they, do they, don't they mean? They fly wherever they want. Don't, they don't have to please, have a path. Your questions. You don't have to check for individual causes that affect the uh, path of an airplane. You don't have to check every time if the engines have this exact same thrust in both sides. You don't have to check uh, if the, there's zero wind sideways compared to the velocity of the airplane. You don't have to keep checking for every single individual effect of the airplane. You simply check if the airplane is going in the right direction, it's in the, in the right place. And if it's not, then you correct for that. Whatever it is that's causing that. There's a number of factors applying to the airplane simultaneously. And if it will work out the deviation you would expect from the change in uh, east and west velocity of the Earth's, uh, Earth's uh, uh, motion. Uh, is, that, is that anything they check for? Is that something they ever check for? Like making sure that their eastward tangential velocity is uh, close enough, or in my opinion, the exact same rate as the Earth's rotation? Is that something they ever check for? I don't know, did I cut out? Did he cut out? What happened? Yeah, it's just quiet for a second. Maybe he lost connection. Has anyone ever responded with that, that autopilot just automatically does it? Has anyone ever said that? They've tried. They've tried, but, you know, we didn't have autopilot when people are just flying wherever they want before any of that. Right. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work anyway. Because the, whatever the mechanism is, like if you're going west southwest, that means the autopilot would have some way of making the plane go backwards and sideways as it's landing to keep up with the rotation of the Earth. You know, it doesn't make, the the plane's not even made to do that. Even if the pilot were aware that he'd need to do that, or that the autopilot were somehow, we would have to like if it was sideways, eastward. You know, if eastward was sideways to the north facing ro ramp, they'd have to have jets on the side of the plane to keep it up with the Earth as they're landing. I mean, the design of the plane would be completely different if it was spinning. Oh, why? I find this interesting because even if you assume that the the, the Earth is a sphere, sphere and the air is moving with the Earth, there's more than enough um, drag um, by the by the wind to cause the plane to keep up with the Earth, more or less, right? That the you know, wow. If you're going from north to south, you've only got to pick up um, you know, a fraction of a metre per second of acceleration, and that's about the terminal velocity of a plane going sideways. It's easy to get dragged right. along by the wind. You may not have understood my previous point, but um, I, the winds aren't what keeps the plane moving with uh, eastward rotation, even theoretically. Um, but, I mean, you could say winds, and then we'll have to talk about the winds that are like overpowering the other winds going in the opposite direction. Yeah, but in, in general, right, the air is moving with the Earth on average. Well, you know, average, on average and in general are not things you want to tell a pilot when you're talking about a safe landing. It has to be precise. Yeah. It has to be exactly what's happening. It can't just be like, oh, in general, we're thinking the air is going to move you in, in pretty much the same rotation as the Earth. So when you land, 
you should be just about the same Eastbrook Villa. Now, if you weren't, it would be a big problem because your wheels are going to break off and you're going to crash the plane. But we're just going to trust in this air that's making it a close to a one-to-one relationship when you're landing the plane, which you always just assume is going to be stationary. But we're just going to put our faith in these winds to make you go backwards and sideways. Think about it as if you're going west-southwest, right? Think about that. West-southwest. Now you're going yep. against the rotation, and you're going to the equator, where you need twice as fast eastward rotation, right? So now you're going to have to correct backwards and sideways to go directly eastward twice as fast. How's that oh, happening? Yeah, yeah. They're not teleporting. Yeah, the, no, yeah, and you're not being lobbed as a projectile, and it's happening very slowly. So at no time is there any difference, any, any large differential velocity between you and the surface of the Earth. You're, the pilot is maintaining that constant flight velocity across the surface. Well, you, that's the assumption. That's just a concept that you're just going to say at no time there's going to be a problem. Let me just ask you this. Could there be a problem? Could the pilot create the problem on purpose? Could he get in one of those jets that flies 1,000 miles an hour and hovers in midair with 40,000 pounds of thrust resistance? Could he get in one of those jets and then make sure he's not in perfect sync with the eastward rotation? Would that be possible? Uh, the wind would blow him in that case. He'd, he'd, he'd move with the air. because he, so, so you're talking about like one of those jets that can hover ballistically or whatever they call it on its own thrust. Yeah, like fly, like, fly at the same yeah. speed as the Earth supposedly spins. You're saying the wind oh, okay. is going to like still blow him into the one. Oh, right? he's even, though wind's, even though wind's blowing all directions, you're going to say the wind still just blows in one direction predominantly and is going to overcome the 1,000 miles an hour jet that has 40,000 pounds of thrust resistance and it's going to be perfectly overriding the winds that are variable. And then it's going to make this one-to-one relationship somehow, this wind. Where's this wind? What's this wind called? So there's always, so you've got the earth moving. You've got the wind moving relative to the earth. Then you've got the aircraft moving relative to the wind, right? So the aircraft can only go a certain speed relative to the air around it. Otherwise, it'll, it'll go into um, structural failure, right? So it's got a maximum speed compared to the wind. The wind has a maximum speed compared to the ground. The whole lot's kind of hung together by those maximums which means the aircraft can never get beyond the ground speed uh, more than the wind speed plus its velocity, right? So th- that's why the aircraft is always able to be approximately at the ground speed when it comes to land because it's, it's never exceeding that relative speed by more than that, that combined slip difference between the two. I'm sorry, somebody was just talking to me. But how wouldn't yeah. you be able to detect any speed differences? And wouldn't there be a critical mass uh, or a critical uh, worst case scenario where the rotation of the Earth, the layout of the airport, the wind are all heading in some direction? And that is called some catastrophe for we can't land. No, because the aircraft is never going more than its flight envelope faster than the ground speed, right? So, or faster than the airspeed, so, which means that it can never be going more than what it can fly plus the wind, which means it's always got the ability to slow down and land. New perspective, this is your kind of... Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm busy for a second. I'll be right back. All right, man. All right. So, what did you say? Okay. So the. So the plane's taking off with a, a conserved momentum of 500 miles an hour eastward, and then it goes west yeah, no, west where it needs to be going 1,000 miles an hour eastward. How does it gain the 500 by the time it gets there, and it's only going west-southwest? How does it go backwards and sideways twice as fast by the time it gets there? Yeah, so the conservation of momentum is one thing, right? But we don't have to worry about what the momentum looks like from the outside. We only have to worry about what the momentum looks like from the Earth's perspective. And that is controlled by our, our flight. Our engines and our wings determine what our momentum relative to the ground is. 
And that's kind of also, limited. Right, by, so is, there a gauge, is there a gauge that says, okay, starting off going 500 miles per hour in the eastward vector, and then there's going to be a gauge that tells the pilot that he's okay to, to land the plane because he's now, this gauge is telling him that he's now moving eastward at the exact same rate as the rotation of the Earth. Is that what you're saying? The planes are made to do this? or I don't get what you're saying. No, no. It's quite easy to tell if you've got the same rotation as the Earth. Um, and, and what, what would you, if you oh, were to... how do you to, do that? How do you do that? Because you look out the window and you see that oh, the Earth is tra travelling at the same speed as you, right? You're coming in to land, the instrument yeah, landing yeah, so you're coming in. Yeah. You think, do you think pilots ever look out the window to make sure they're going eastward at the same rotation of the Earth? They don't know do they're going eastward. Happens? Everything is moving eastward together, right? <laughs> that's they, the concept. Not that's just all. That's, 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 that's just the concept. It's just a concept. It's not, it, it could be either stationary or you could think about it going eastward at the exact same rate. But it's just a concept. Either way, if it's stationary, it works just fine, right? You look out the window, okay. the ground's stationary relative to your movement. And if you're going eastward at the exact same rate, you can look out your window and you see that the ground's stationary relative to your movement. It would look exactly yeah. the same. So you only know that it's going yeah. eastward because you think of it that way, not because there's any evidence that that's happening whatsoever. Well, that's it. You, you cannot use this to determine whether the Earth is moving or not because all of those things get lost in uh, wind resistance, gusts, drag adjustments. It's, the aircraft it's not is true. not sensitive enough. No, you would know. You would know. Like the, like the scenario we went through the other day where you made it worse on yourself by saying that the plane's going from the North Pole to the equator. And you said, well, by the time he gets there, he's not going to even know that he's accelerated twice as to, to a thousand miles an hour eastward, it only had a 400 mile per hour cruising speed. So you're saying this plane takes off from the North Pole, stays at a 400 mile per hour cruising speed all the way to the equator, and somehow this plane is just going to be moving a thousand miles an hour sideways, and the pilot yeah. would have no idea that that's going on. That's just a concept. That's obviously not the case. So the pilot would know if he's going a thousand miles an hour faster sideways. Now, that's ridiculous. I don't even think that's How possible. How would he know? How would he know? <laughs> if the so air was moving with him and the ground was moving with him. He never, because he only accelerated to 400 miles per hour to begin with. <laughs> okay. Now, what, now what yeah. stops the plane going faster than, than 400 miles an hour? The, the design of the plane, all of that. Yeah, wind resistance, right, basically? Well, no, I mean, some planes are, like, made to actually, like, take the acceleration speeds up to a certain flight. And a lot of them would break apart if they went that fast, I think. Yeah, that's it, because the, the aerodynamics um, characteristics versus their thrust means they can't go any faster. And so that's, that's their, their, their maximum um, airspeed that they're able to attain, right? Wait, wait, Jazza, come on, just be real. Don't you think that that's ridiculous to even think? that the guy would be going a thousand miles an hour faster than what he started from. The plane's not even made to go that fast, that he'd be going sideways that fast, but then somehow maintain a 400 mile per hour forward vector and just think that's the only thing that's going on. That is ridiculous and not even possible. We talked about the acceleration the other day, right? It's something like um, 0 0.02 meters per second per second, about one hundredth of a G something like that. That's the acceleration required over that duration of flight to go from nothing to a, a thousand kilometers an hour as seen by someone from outside the earth with the earth spinning. Well, just thinking of it incrementally to make it seem like a smaller amount doesn't, doesn't take away from the ludicrousness of it. It still has to be a but thousand miles an hour sideways faster. There's well, it does for you. It's incredulity. It's not incredulity. It's impossibility we're talking about here, guys. And and we still and full circle, we still have to say, what's the mechanism that's keeping him go that exact extra one thousand miles an hour sideways as it's coming to a land? That was already answered. No, it wasn't answered. It wasn't answered. I don't know. You cut out. You cut out. What's the I mechanism just, that's keeping him moving exactly at the same rate so that he can? can I add a very important person? point, Rose. Can I add a more, very important point? Bruno Gillison, an astronomy aficionado, airline pilot gazing at the stars on night flights, answers on Cura 
do pilots have to account for the Earth's rotation? And his answer is, most pilots have no idea what that question entails, so that alone should answer it. They don't account for it. Yeah, we are but all on board with it. Exactly. No one's disagreeing with it. No, but you are, because he's pointing no, out not. the fact that the Earth's rotation is not accounted for when you are landing a plane. Yeah, so if you're listening to the conversation, our response is not that it is accounted for. We're explaining why you don't have to. So you stating that doesn't actually add to the conversation because we already agree with that. They don't have to account for Coriolis. We all agree with that. So either there's no Coriolis, which makes the most sense, or there's Coriolis with some kind of explanation of him not realizing that he's uh, accounting for it, but not trying. Which is the one that does make sense, but we can't get you to acknowledge well, that. That makes no sense, obviously. Just be it does about make that. sense to you. But, uh... It's not about now making sense to me, talking about objectively, that is ridiculous. Oh, we're in the middle of the discussion. Don't declare that your position is the one that makes objective sense. We can do the same well, thing. You have to, well, you have to then name the mechanism that keeps the plane in perfect rotation with the Earth as it's slowing to a land in some angle at a different direction. We told you, it's called the pilot is trying to follow a great circle route when it's flying the airplane. No. Oh, you must have has cut out. Was, my to to that earlier. I think maybe your audio cut out, but that means the, the pilot would have to make sure that the plane can fly backwards and sideways as he's trying to land forwards. Because it could be an angle that's that at, the angle to the eastward rotation could be backwards and sideways. In fact, if he's going west southwest, he'd be backwards and sideways to the eastward rotation the whole flight. No, I will reply to that already. The pilot doesn't have to uh, try to correct for individually everything that affects the the flight. It only has to account for the overall effect of everything that is affecting the flight, which is simply trying to uh, stay on his course. Yeah, but I already, I already retorted that. They can get off course, they can fly wherever they want, before any of this course idea, before any of the autopilot idea, before the planes were even made to do any of this, they would they could just fly wherever they want. They can fly all the way to the equator, fly all around the world, land on the surface like a stationary, they never have to worry about the eastward rotation. The planes wouldn't be able to even move backwards and sideways, literally, by their own design. So it's, it is ludicrous. That's why I'm calling it objectively, ridiculously impossible. No, uh, pointing out that you can't, like, you can allow the airplane to be affected by wind and 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 uh, uneven thrust of the engines, for example, that doesn't immediately then makes uh, Coriolis noticeable because all the effects are added up together to the airplane. You don't have a single one. Uh, it, it's like a, if you can go whatever you want, then you can see all those effects separately. That, that just no, doesn't fall. No, vector, vector mass doesn't help you here either. Vector, just Putting them all in one equation and thinking about them as one movement doesn't make them like one movement. Oh, the airplane is just one thing. So if it deviates, it deviates as a summation of every effect that is affecting it. It can't, uh, it can't go to the right and to the left at the same time. If you have something that makes it go to the right and something that makes it go to the left, you don't have those two things happening in a way that is distinguishable. You, all you have is the summation of those effects. Well, yeah, but you can think about it a lot easier that way if you're just thinking about a course in, like, the air, the airplane in the air. But when it comes to the land, it would have to worry about keeping up with the eastward rotation as well as winds, right? Now the winds are moving him relative to the ground, and the ground is moving relative to him. That's two things, not one. I know. So it doesn't matter if you think about it as one, it's two things. And he never has to worry about the other thing. I'm not thinking the air and the ground as one. I'm saying that all the effects that affect the airplane, they affect the airplane together. You don't see them separately. So well, you, you can't would, distinguish between coils and wind and the aerodynamics of the airplane. Yes, you can. Yes, you absolutely can. When you're landing the plane, you're going to know if you're landing on a moving surface and you have to keep up with that surface, as well as deal with the winds that are pushing you off your alignment from that moving surface, you would know. That you have a moving surface that you're trying to catch up to, and you have winds pushing you the opposite direction of that moving surface. So you have to even overcompensate somehow backwards and sideways, which the plane's not even made to do. It wouldn't oh. work. 
how you can distinguish between how much is the wind affecting your airplane and how much is Coriolis affecting your airplane if you only have uh, all the effects combined affecting your airplane. Well, no, no, we just, we just, we just established there's two separate things happening. It's not about thinking of them as one combined thing. You were trying to land on a surface that's moving eastward at a certain rotation, and you're trying to make sure you're lined up with that. You have to make sure the plane's moving at the exact same rate in that eastward rotation, right? It has to be moving exactly the same rate. But now you have all these winds messing you up from being at that rate. So now you have winds blowing you off your alignment from this moving surface, and now you're overpowering. No, maybe the wind's blowing you too much. Now there's winds blowing me way too much, and the surface keeps moving. Every time I get lined up with it, the surface just keeps moving eastward. And now the winds, now the, there's no winds, and, there, and there's no winds at all. And, there, and the surface is still moving eastward. Shit, I just compensated for the winds, and now there's no wind. And I was hoping that wind would keep me up with that surface so that I can land on it and just assume to treat it as stationary. These are the kind of problems that pilots would saying, deal with all of the time if the Earth were moving. Dude. Are you saying you, you believe a pilot could match the wind just right, so the only effect on the airplane it would be Coriolis? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I'm saying that the pilot. Oh, only if that's not the case, you know, I'm what are the you even arguing? The only possible way. I'm saying the only possible way that the pilot could assume to treat the Earth as stationary wherever he goes, without ground pass, without any of that, right? The only way he can always assume to treat it as stationary is if it's actually stationary. Otherwise, these are the kind of problems he would have to deal with. Objective. You're not actually presenting a case that concludes that. Now you're just stating it. You don't get that he would have to be in perfect sync with the eastward rotation? No, I explained to you why uh, there is more than one thing happening with the airplane at the same time. Like, uh, you never is. Well, let's take, you it. Never let's are. take it one at a time. Let's take it one at a time. So that you're, so you're, you're in agreement for the, pilot to treat the, for the pilot to treat the runway stationary. The plane has to be moving in a one-to-one -one relationship with the eastward rotation. Yes or no? Uh, say that again. For the pilot to treat at any runway as if it's stationary, at any angle, anywhere, the plane would have to be moving in a one-to-one -one relationship with the eastward rotation of the surface. What do you mean a one-to-one -one relationship? Meaning that Is it that has to be still un 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 unrecognizably the same. That he could just assume that the Earth is stationary when he's landing the plane on it, so he never has to worry about the wheels breaking off. That's not an assumption one that the Earth is stationary. That's an assumption that the Earth and the airplane has the same uh, tangential velocity in the east-west direction. What I, that's what I'm asking, right? So your your agreement is that the the plane needs to be moving in the exact same eastward tangential velocity as the surface of the Earth, so that the pilot can land the plane on the surface as if it's stationary. Yeah, assuming yes, no. yeah, assuming yes. you land in north okay. or south land. So we got one thing. We got one thing, right? That's one separate mm -hmm. thing from everything else he has to deal with. So how is the pilot, when he's at an angle, that's going to make him have to go backwards and sideways with that eastward rotation, going to make the plane go backwards and sideways to keep up with the eastward rotation? What do you mean how does backwards the pilot do that? And how does the plane do so that? Why would the airplane have, have to go backwards? Do that? What do you mean because have to go the backwards? Angle, the angle of the runway is causing the plane to have to move with the rotation backwards and sideways because it's why a west-southwest facing runway. Okay, why is it backwards, not just sideways? Because if the, if the runway is facing west-southwest at an angle to the rotation, right, then it's going to be no, backwards let's and sideways. Let's talk about one scenario at a time. Uh, I, let's talk about, about this. This is the scenario. This is the scenario we're talking about right now. This scenario was a north south landing. to be going backwards and sideways. Oh, why are you trying to run away from this? West, I'm not trying to run away. I'm trying to understand if you're picturing if, a north south. Do you south. agree? I'm saying west Please. southwest. I'm just, the I'm angle just of the purpose. runway is west southwest. We're dealing with that scenario. The angle of the runway is west southwest. Let me, that means let me just the ask plane the would have to be going to keep up with the eastward rotation. The plane would have to be going backwards and sideways to keep up with the rotation because the, the angle that it's landing on the surface with west southwest. New, new perspective. I'm, I'm, I'm not a mind reader. So, if I'm confused about what you're picturing, I have to ask you. Are you picturing a north to south landing or a east and west landing when you ask me that question? A west southwest facing runway. It's at an angle west, west southwest. Southwest. You understand? You understand that? At like a west southwest. It's at an angle. 
45 degree angle to the, the equator, let's say. And it only had a tangential velocity of 500. Now it needs to be going twice as fast backwards and sideways. How is the plane? The planes aren't designed to do that, so that's why I'm saying it actually is objective. Okay, so impossible. I disagree with the first question because when you asked me if it has to have the same east and west direction, the same tangential direction, I said yes because yeah. I was a, a picturing it north to south landing, which okay. you agreed to. So why would it be In different? that case, uh, it wouldn't uh, because it's no longer the same east and west velocity. If the airplane is landing on an angle, not an, an north yeah. to south. Runways are, faced, runways are always faced wherever. It has an it has a east velocity and it has a, a south velocity. So none of those oh, are yeah, going to be two factors. Yeah, so how, yeah, how would a west-south-west west runway work? Because we know that happens. They, they, they just put the runways where, wherever it makes sense to. They don't worry about the rotation when they make the runways, which is a big clue, by the way. And the, the airplane is going to have a larger velocity in the east and in the south direction as well. So none of those are going to be in sync. Regardless on the Earth spinning or not. Even on a stationary Earth, that would be the case. So that doesn't have anything to do with the rotation. Oh, now you're, you're lost. Hold on. Where are the crackers? Mm -hmm. That's why I've tried to bring you to the north and south. Land, well, well, I, I, land. I, I, so you're admitting that it wouldn't be at work. It wouldn't work for the west, west, southwest, because the plane would have to be no, going back. Well, then why are you running saying. away from that? Why are you trying to change it? I'm not that's running away from that. I'm pointing that's out the confusion of what west you're west saying. West. What do you mean confusion? Yeah, because at the beginning you agree we were talking about north, uh, north to south landing. Well, what's the problem? And, with now, the and then you mentioned. West? And then you mentioned the airplane having to go backwards, and that confused me. Yeah. Now I realize you were not, that's why not I'm actually telling you talking. Because it would be, well, because it's a west-south-west west facing runway, makes it backwards and sideways. I was explaining myself. Now you can't explain okay, how that it does, would do that, that, so that makes sense. Right? That didn't. That didn't make sense. So can we can we deal with the north to south landing first, which is the simpler scenario, and then we go to the oh, more complicated scenario we where can. it's going diagonally. It's just it's just as bad for you, but why is it that west southwest west is not such a problem? Do you at least know what I meant by backwards and sideways now? I don't know what you mean by backwards and sideways, but uh, we have to agree on one well, direction because, first. Like, are we doing north to south or are we doing 45 degrees diagonally? Well, I don't this really is matter. like a discussion yeah. like happening in the cockpit while the, the pilots are trying yeah. to figure out how the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we just do this north to south runway thing? Because I don't like the way that one's angled. Um, I, I don't know about going backwards and sideways. I might not be in sync with the rotation of the Earth, and we might have problems. Can we just? Uh, could you change the runway direction for me, for for just the means of discussion and for our safety? It wouldn't work anyway. It's, you understand what I'm saying? Funny. If it was west-southwest, right? If the plane is flying in a west-southwest direction, Bacon, that means it would have to gain twice as fast. If it starts with a 500-mile-per-hour conserved momentum, it would have to be going twice as fast backwards and sideways to keep up with the rotation. If it goes to the equator with 1,000 miles backwards. an hour. Huh? What do you mean have to go uh, faster backwards? Because if it was going against the motion. spin, it's going against the spin, right? And it's going south. So it's west against the spin and headed towards the equator where the tangential velocity is doubled. So it's doubled, it's doubled the tangential velocity, right? Because he only started with 500. Yeah. Now he needs 1,000 by the time he gets to the equator. And he's angled, right? So that's a backwards and sideways movement that he'd have to gain somehow twice the acceleration in to, and then even if that were possible even if the plane were oh yeah i can't focus right now Just give me a second doesn't seem like that hard a problem for a smart guy okay i was i'll share my screen and let me try to draw what you're saying and then you confirm if i'm following because uh, it seems that you're changing the scenario like at least twice already Can you join my there's live stream? Only, there's only one direction of the Earth spin, so he's referencing that direction to the direction of the landing and the landing strip. Yeah, but he gave he changed the direction of the landing after asking me a question that only applied to the first direction. 
So when the direction was southwards, north to south, he asked me if the airplane would have to sink with the east and west velocity of the, uh, of the, how do you call it, the, the thing where the airplane lands? The landing strip. Yeah. Landing strip? That That's the name? Landing strip? There's probably other names, but that's that's one that I know for sure. Okay. Okay, so you would have to uh, uh, sync the east and west motion with the landing strip when it's going northwards, uh, landing north to south. That's not the case if it's going diagonally. So the question that I answered doesn't actually apply to the scenario where it's going diagonally. So he changed it after I answered the question to a different scenario. Okay, so I only changed it because you were asking me why I would have to go backwards and sideways. Then I gave you an example that perfectly explains that. Now you're having a so it doesn't have to go backwards and sideways when it's landing north to south, you're saying? No, it would just be eastward still, sideways. Okay, can we talk about that scenario first? I just think it's funny that west-southwest does fuck you up. It but doesn't it doesn't matter. Me up. Going, going sideways would be probably... Scenario. Could we, can change it. we can go back to north to south. I know it's impossible to do the other one. But it's no, not impossible. We, we, let's, do the other, let's do the impossible one. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Just tell me which one we're talking about. It's not that that specific one has a problem. The problem is simply that you changed in the middle of it. Either way, how is the plane keeping up with the rotation? That's the, that's the actual question. Okay, it's not. Okay, that settles that. So uh, yeah, you, you only other... be completely in sync with the sur surface when it's com completely landed. After it, it, uh, it completely stops on the ground, that's when it's actually in sync with the surface. At any other point, it has a different velocity than the surface because it's still moving across the surface. Well, that's, that, but that's my point. It would have to keep up with the rotation. That doesn't have anything to do with the rotation. That no, that's, I'm saying the plane would have thing. to be in the eastward. It would have to stay with the rotation perfectly so that it could just assume the Earth is stationary when it's landing. Yeah, what I said is exactly the same on a stationary Earth and a rotating Earth. That doesn't have anything to do with rotation. Okay, so I, I don't even know you, what you're saying now. What did you say? Yeah, so the Earth, it's, only station, it's only in perfect sync when it's on the ground. I agree. It would be can only in perfect sync. What? Can you join my live stream? Oh, I'm sure. I'm drawing the 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 the, the thing the, the airplane and the landing strip and the direction of north south and east and west. So I I'm, so I can make sure I'm following what you're saying, and you're following what I'm saying too. Yeah, what do you think about my airplane, Jesse? That's real nice. Thank you. Too bad it's going to crash if it tries to land on a movie. Is that the scenario you're describing when you say uh, east, southwest, something like that? Northeast, southwest, is that the direction? Yeah, it's west southwest. Yeah, Wait, going west, west southwest. That's good, southwest. good enough. Yeah. Yeah, west going is at an angle. Southwest, um, that's not making sense to me. Well, if, if it's an eastward rotation, west, then... well, if the eastward rotation is coming from the from the North Pole, right, and it has to go to the equator, right, where it needs to be a thousand miles an hour in perfect tangential velocity sync with uh, Earth's rotation. Yeah, for, forget the rotation for a second. Back. I'm simply trying to understand where to place the airplane here in my drawing. Can you draw my live stream and confirm that I did it correctly? Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm picturing what you're trying to say. That's the concept, bro. You got it. I don't think you're in my live stream. Now, now draw arrows. Now draw. I am. Yeah, I'm looking at right at it. Oh, draw, yeah, draw yeah. the arrows. Draw the arrows pointing directly east directly with the globe. Yeah, it's the eastward well, rotation, right? 
the rotation of our supposed rotation of the Earth eastward. Okay, that's the that's the velocity of the Earth. Okay. Okay, so then it starts with a smaller velocity. Starts with a starts with 500 mile per hour. Starts with a 500 mile per hour tangential velocity. So it, we can we can let you beg the question with that conserved momentum all the way to the equator. It's moving 500 miles per oh, hour. It's about to land. Huh? No, it, it, it's about to land. It doesn't have uh, 500 miles an hour. Sure. Okay. Okay. What does it have? How fast is it moving eastward? Uh, how fast does an airplane land? No, no. I'm asking so how fast is the ground it? moving? How fast is the ground moving eastward compared to the, the plane's movement eastward? Well, the ground is moving a thousand miles an hour. So let me put this here. Okay. A thousand. All right. That's the velocity so of the how ground. Fast is the plane no. moving? How fast is the plane moving eastward now? Yeah, that's why I asked the question. How quickly, how fast pl airplanes are when they're landing, usually? So I can give you an answer. 250 well, they, miles they, Yeah, they slow down from 400 to zero. So, so, someone gave me the answer, but I couldn't hear. What was that? Uh, Jesse said 250. 250? Okay, so uh, 250 divided by the square root of 2 and mm, that's 1000 minus that. Okay, so the velocity of the airplane is in this direction is 823 miles per hour when it's landing. All right, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not a thousand, so you still have a problem, but how did you get that number? Uh, what I just said, I divided by the square root of two and I subtracted from a thousand. Why did you do that? Because that would be the eastwards velocity of the airplane when it's landing. How do you know that it'd be moving eastward that? that amount. I mean, it's only going 400 miles an hour cruising speed forward. It only went up to 400 miles an hour. How's it going 800 yeah. miles an hour sideways? That velocity is relative to the landing strip. So relative to no, the landing it, strip, it, that would be the velocity. Well, well, how would the plane gain any kind of acceleration because it's relative to something? Well, it has thrusts. They well, that's accelerate the airplane. How is, it, how, is it, how is it thrusting backwards and sideways? They're not working backwards and sideways. They work in the direction that the airplane is aiming at. Yeah, only forward, right? So how is it going east if it's only going west-southwest? The plane doesn't move perfectly forward the whole way. It, it slightly turns left and right in its course, correcting for it sure. not being on the right course. When it does That's that, right. when, it makes any, when it makes any curve to the right or the left, then it, it, the acceleration is no longer just forward. Yeah, it could be curving left and right the whole time. That makes sense, sure. But you're not saying yeah, that, that it's going to be moving. It's going to be moving eastward 800 miles an hour just because it it curves a little bit one one direction or the other as it's going. Oh, it does it multiple times during the its course. Yeah, but it doesn't do that to make the plane accelerate eight to 800 miles an hour when it was only going 400 forward. It's not going to accelerate the plane to go twice you as know, fast for as how long forward is acceleration. Point? Well, why would what what evidence do we have that that ever happens? Like, why would that happen? How could it happen? The plane's not even made to go that fast. What, what's uh, causing it? What's the mechanism? Wait, what's the mechanism that makes this? Or, or you can just keep going. I mean, if you believe that, it's still not in sync with a thousand miles an hour, so it still doesn't work. But it wouldn't be going eight hundred miles an hour sideways. Why would it be doing that? Uh, that would be the velocity of the airplane when it's landing at that. Point after all of its course. Where are you getting that from? If the plane's going 800 miles an hour sideways, the pilot would be aware that that's happening. He would make it do that if they could do that, but it can't. It can't oh, even the, do that, and the pilot's not even making it do that. No, Ground the path doesn't help. It, please, please, this eight, uh, this 823 miles per hour, that would be on an inertial plane, on a plane that is not rotating with the Earth. The uh, the pilot doesn't have access to that. If you want to know the ground velocity of the, the airplane in that direction, it would be 177 miles per hour, not 823. 
I'm using the same frame where the uh, the same reference frame where the surface is moving a thousand miles an hour. In that reference frame, then the airplane is going east towards 823 miles. But the but that's 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 doesn't have access to the reference Almost 200 frame. miles an hour. It's going to be almost 200 miles per hour slower than the eastward rotation, even with that. Exactly. It's uh, 177 uh, um, so miles when it per hour. When it lands, the surface is going to be moving and break the wheels off and crash the plane. No, because if you add that velocity, which is 177 in that direction, to this velocity, which is 177 in this direction, you get a diagonal velocity of 200 miles per hour, which is the velocity in which the airplane is going to land. And it's going to land the same direction of the landing strip, which is 45 degrees. Here. Wait, wait, 823, and then you're getting 177 what? It's 177 in this direction. It's 100, uh, 823 like in that direction. Or downwards? Wait, what's that, what's that direction? Downwards? Or southwards. Southwards. 177 oh, miles per hour. Wait, how, is that, how is that even possible? How is it going 823 miles an hour eastward and 177 miles an hour southward? And it also has a west-southwest vector. How is any of that possible? Well, oh, I decompose the velocity. Mathematical, mathematical jargon that doesn't have anything to do no, with that's, reality. It's actually <laughs> so high school. It's, it's literally high school math. Uh, you decompose the velocity in two vectors when you have axes that are parallel to each other, like the north-south axis and the east-west axis. Those are parallel to each other, so you can decompose the velocity of the airplane in two axes. One is the east and west velocity, and the other is the north-south velocity. This is very basic math. This is not math jargon. Kinematics. Oh, see, the kinematics and the dynamics are two different things here, bro. You are not talking about specifically the dynamics or the kinematics. I'm just answering you what are the velocities here. No, no, no. The kinematics are the mathematical thing that you're saying would make it in, in sync with the Earth. You, you have to you're explain how it would be even... If you're saying the plane's going 823 miles an hour sideways, eastward, with the rotation, you have to explain how that happened and what the mechanism is that's making that happen. That's it's not going with the rotation. The rotation is a thousand miles per hour. The airplane is just 123 miles per hour. Sure. It's simply slower than the surface by 177 miles. You have to explain where the A23 came from. It only had a 400 mile per hour cruise. Well, it came from the velocity the airplane had when it started flying, plus every acceleration it was subject to. Uh, no, it didn't because it only had 500 to begin, to begin with. And it's going, it's accelerating in all directions to compensate for wind. So it's not having anything to do with accelerating in one direction. Only. It has to accelerate in multiple directions to keep on its course. So it flies for a couple hours. During those couple hours, it has a bunch of acceleration and a bunch of different velocities. You have to add those up to end up with a final velocity. Did I lose connection again? No, you're loud and clear. Okay, okay. Thank you. Hey, I'm at a store. I'm checking out. Sorry. No, no problem. Okay, so, okay, so you're one of the people that thinks that the, the airplane and the pilot do all the acceleration. It's not the atmosphere that's blowing it in that direction to, to make up the difference, right? You don't think that at all? That's what I said. The atmosphere, the interaction between the airplane and the atmosphere also is a source of acceleration to the airplane. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm out of the story now. What's that? What's accelerating it twice as fast sideways perfectly? Okay, the interaction between the airplane and the, the atmosphere, that's, an, that's yeah. also a source of acceleration to the airplane. Also, we got a couple of variables. You have more than one thing that accelerates the airplane. One of them is oh, yeah. the interaction between the airplane because and the atmosphere. If it was a lot of, another one. So, if that, so how is it that the atmosphere would be accelerating it in one direction, even though the wind's going all directions? Let's get that taken care of. I didn't say it's in one direction. The interaction okay. between the airplane and the so atmosphere it's not helping has... The plane. So the atmosphere is not helping the plane necessarily at all. It could just be the wind blowing westward the whole time, right? 
uh, it's not helping necessarily. It's just doing okay, whatever good. it's doing, depending on the wind velocity, the aerodynamics of the airplane. Yeah, so it has nothing to do with that. Now, it's just, this plane's off course, right? It has so to do with it's that. Just looking, it's just looking for some... No, it's just it's off course. It got, it, got, it got in a storm, right? And it's just trying to mm -hmm. try to find an area to land in, so it has nothing to do with the course, right? It's trying to make an emergency landing somewhere, but at least it can assume that the Earth is stationary. It sees a highway. You ever seen planes fly and land on highways? They have to do that sometimes. So it's not on course at all. It has nothing to do with being on course, but it's just in the south now compared to where it was. It had a 500 mile per hour conserved momentum when it started. That's how fast we can assume the plane was moving with the Earth because it was on the Earth. Now it needs to be going twice as fast eastward directly, right? By the time it gets to the equator, right? But it only went west southwest the whole time, right? So the idea of making corrections to make it go directly eastward twice as fast is insane. I don't know how you're expecting him to do that. And it wouldn't, and he doesn't have a course anyway. So it wouldn't like, you know, happen because he's trying to stay on course. He's just getting to the south. He's trying to get there. He was in a storm. He couldn't see anything. He can't even see the ground, right? So he's getting there and he's going to find the highway to stand to land on. And we know he can always just assume to treat it as stationary because that, that plane's always going to be moving in the eastward tangential velocity or it's just going to be landing on a stationary earth, which makes more, more sense because he never did any corrections to stay on course the whole time. And the atmosphere could be blowing in whatever direction. So that's not helping him. How is the plane moving twice as fast directly eastward when it only went west-southwest and it only had a 500-mile-per-hour conserved momentum to begin with bacon? Explain the dynamics. Oh, should I respond to the two-minute monologue or should I respond to the last question you made after the monologue? I was trying to go for a back and forth here. Well, you could explain it. You could respond to the whole thing, but what it comes down to is what's the mechanism? Oh, you mentioned things we already talked what's about. What's the mechanism I'm not that sure makes what him to perfectly in sync? What's the mechanism that makes him perfectly in sync with the eastward rotation when he had no course? He was just trying to get to the south. He's not following a course, right? He's not making corrections for any course. He's just getting to the south where he has to be twice as fast sideways and landing on the earth as if it's stationary. What makes him go twice as fast sideways with the rotation perfectly? Oh, if he's if he's flying blindly, there's no guarantee he's going to be uh, in the same direction that he's supposed to. So he might not be in sync oh, really? with the Earth. Well, yeah. That would be interesting. So, so then by that by that logic, you're saying that if a plane like a jet that flies like a thousand miles an hour and um, he has forty thousand pounds of thrust resistance, like a helicopter, can you know stay in midair and he could fly as fast as the rotation supposedly goes. Then he could he could get off like he could get out of sync with the Earth on purpose and just take a camera out and show that the Earth spins separately from the from the the plane right as he's hovering. How does it show that the Earth's spinning? If the Earth was stationary, well, because he, he knows the same. he knows. If, if, Wait, please, stationary? please, please let me finish the sentence. Then respond. If the Earth was stationary and he took the exact same course, the video would look exactly the same. So how is that? How would that show that the Earth's spinning? Well, you just said that he. There's no guarantee that he's going to be in sync with the eastward rotation, right? Yeah. So you means that there, that means you're saying that the eastward rotation could be different than the plane's eastward rotation at any given time. Yeah, I would say eastward velocity. The Earth's eastward velocity the might be different than velocity. the airplane's eastward velocity. Yeah, yeah, that would be a problem with that. You you agree if it was off like even to ten miles an hour? If the, if the plane wasn't moving in it doesn't make it a problem velocity, no. close enough that even a 10 mile an hour difference of the surface that it's landing on compared to its own eastward rotation there would be a problem because it would break the wheels off at least right no i mean i have on the screen an example where it's not a problem so the eastward velocity of the airplane is 177 miles slower than the surface so it's not in sync with the surface yet it lands at 250 miles per hour exactly with the road with the landing trip no, no, no. You no, no. no, only have to be. You're, you're drawing failed already. You can't say it's going 823 miles an hour sideways with a rotation. Where'd you get that? I already answered it. There's but no that's not what we're talking about. Please. There's no, there's, no, there's no course he's following. How does he go in 823 miles an hour sideways now? That's the eastward velocity. So is the pilot aware that the, the plane's going 823 miles an hour sideways? Is the pilot aware of that at all? The plane, does, the pilot doesn't have a, a reading of the velocity of the airplane in a non-inertial frame. Why? So wouldn't that be dangerous? Why? 
Well, because if it was off from the eastward tangential velocity of the Earth, and he's assuming that he's just going to land on it as if it's stationary, he would need to go. He would need to know for sure how fast he's going sideways. No, all he needs to know is his velocity relative to the Earth's surface. In that case, that's twenty uh, hundred. Relative to the moving surface. Wait, relative to the moving surface. No, relative to the surface, I said. Regardless oh, of the where surface, that's stationary moving. surface. You mean stationary surface when you say that, right? No, I didn't mean stationary or moving. In oh, both okay. scenarios, well, then... all he needs to be is to... It, all he needs is to be at 250 miles relative to the landing strip. In the same no, 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 no. It would, it would make a difference. If the Earth were moving, he would be either relative to the moving surface or relative to the stationary surface. Because those would be two different readings completely. Oh, there's just one surface. Yeah, there's just, and it's just stationary, and it's always stationary. That's what the the plane is always measuring it as if it's stationary relative to its own movements, right? Oh, in my screen here, it's not. The surface is moving eastwards a thousand miles an hour. The airplane right. is moving eastward to eight hundred twenty-three miles per hour, so not in sync with the surface. Yet it would land okay. at two hundred and fifty miles per hour, along with the landing strip. In a different, in a, in a perpendicular sideways direction. At a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Why? So where did it get the extra, even though that doesn't work already? How would it get the extra to be 1,000 again? What do you mean? The extra to get 1,000? Yeah, well, it's only 823. It's eastward tangential velocity is 823, and you're saying that the difference of 100 is uh, whatever, the difference of 1,000, right? Yeah, so the difference right there. 177 mm -hmm. miles per hour extra sideways tangentially. How does it like this? Doesn't work already. Just keep that in mind. But if it did work this not? way, how is he making up the extra when he's landing? I, I just want to make you sure. You spent I literally hours explaining this to you in your perspective. Oh come on! Yeah, me too. You're, you're uh, not going to just ride. You're not going <laughs> to ride on Bacon's coattails on a, on, a, on, a, on a theory that still doesn't even work, bro. Don't just come in and act like we we've, we've told you how this works. T explain to me how you get the extra 177 at least. You, What's you that, turn that left? From? No, no, no. Right. Ruiz, I'd rather not talk to you. I'm talking to Bacon. I want to keep this one on one, please. Bacon. What? Where's the extra 177,000 mile eastward tangential velocity come with this scenario that doesn't work already? It's 177, 177,000. Uh, there's no extra. 177, the 170, uh, 177 compared to the. The, uh, you know, the, the thousand he needs, he needs an extra 177 to be going eastward tangentially exactly at a thousand miles an hour to keep up with the rotation. He, In this he scenario, that any extra. Already. he doesn't need any extra velocity. Okay, well, I, don't, I don't know where you're getting that from. I was in the store when you were explaining, but maybe I don't know. What was it? He needs to be moving yeah. with the earth at a thousand miles an hour eastward, right? No, oh, uh, how does he land then? Uh, diagonally at uh, 240 mi uh, 250 miles relative to the surface, which is 823 miles eastwards and 177 miles southwards. Oh, so you're just going to vector math it and then say that's one movement? Yeah, that's how vectors work. You have an X and no, Y component. It's not, moving eastward. it's not moving eastward. It only had 500 miles per hour conserved momentum to begin with. Uh, no. It accelerated due to its course. Now it has 823 uh, miles per hour in the eastward uh, direction. Well, that's that's a concept. I mean, but the pilot's not aware of it. There's no proof of that. There's no dynamics. Obviously, if he's moving 823 miles an hour eastward compared to his original movement, which he was unaware yeah, of as well, by the way, how is he how I'm is not he not aware that he's accelerated to 823 miles an hour sideways? Why because would that be even heavy. possible or even thought even thought even probable? Because he's too yeah, because the two uh, references he has for nav the navigation of the airplane is the air and the land. That's why. Right, but the land is never he's never he's never relative, he's never talking about the land as if it's moving, right? Okay, it does not right, have so to talk about it as if it's ground, moving, right? He's, he's simply always, trying to get to the land. He's the always the concept of the Earth is stationary, right? So if he's moving eight hundred twenty-three miles an hour sideways. And the Earth is just stationary. Why would he be moving 823 miles an hour sideways? That wouldn't happen on a stationary Earth. This example is from a rotating Earth, in which the velocity is 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, which is right, where he's that, landing. That, you don't, you know, first of all, objectively, can you at least agree that if the plane, like say, is taking off from the, from the North Pole even, 
if the plane were having to be going tangentially eastward a thousand miles an hour and only had a cruising speed of 400 miles an hour, like I was talking about with Daza, do you think that the, the pilot wouldn't be aware that the plane is now accelerated to a thousand miles an hour from zero by the time it gets there? Correct, because the cruising speed is relative to the air in the surface. The a thousand miles per hour is relative to inertia frame, which the pilot doesn't have access to. <laughs> but this problem is, I'm talking about just be like real for for a second. Forget about your mathematical idea that this might work. Still, do you think that the pilot would not be aware that the the plane is now moving eastward tangentially a thousand miles an hour when he only accelerated to 400 forward? Right, because that a thousand miles per hour is on a frame that is not rotating with the Earth, a frame that doesn't he doesn't have access to. I'm not asking for your explanation. I'm asking if he didn't have access to that, then what would be uh, the sense in the the pilot not being made aware that his that his plane is physically now moving a thousand miles an hour? Planes usually aren't even made to go that fast. In fact, I'm not sure there was a question there. I'm saying, can you just be like, oh, that does kind of like, you know, make a you little bit of like trouble you? in your mind Sorry, with no. the idea that the pilot's not aware that he's moving this fast, faster than the, he ever even accelerated forward, over twice as fast the amount that he accelerated forward. We assume that he's moving eastward in this tangential velocity, right? We assume it because we have a kinematic concept that that's happening. But there's no dynamics to it, and there's no awareness on the pilot's part. That's my point. And there's no mechanism that's making him do that. Saying corrections doesn't work. Uh, corrections and a little bit left and a little bit right when you only have when you only have a, a cruising speed of 400 miles an hour in one vector forwards, right? In this west southwest direction from the North Pole all the way to the equator. If he's only going to be correcting a little bit to stay, even if he's staying on course, this little bit of corrections when the winds are blowing in all directions isn't going to automatically make the plane go eastward 800, 1,000 miles faster than where he started from. You get that that doesn't work, right? Uh, no, I Otherwise, don't you have it. to actually name a mechanism that made it do that. What's the mechanism that makes it go 1,000 miles an hour from zero to 1,000 sideways when he only had a cruising speed of 400 forward? What's the mechanism that made that happen without the pilot's awareness? It's the combination of all the acceleration that the airplane experienced during its course. But if it was like only 500, right? Somehow like that, you know, that acceleration was only 500. It'd be a big problem. He would be 500 miles per hour out of sync with the Earth, right? It's not just to 500. Yeah, it'd be up to 1,000, right? But you, you, that it makes no sense because there's no mechanism. Correcting for the course doesn't help. There's no mechanism. I just, Correcting I just for the course doesn't make him go a thousand miles an hour sideways bacon get real it does on a rotating earth because the course is relative Why? to the surface because the course is just relative because to the you surface. think of it as relative just because the course no he has no course he's lost remember he's blindly going to the to the equator he's lost he's in a storm he has no course he's just <laughs> going there and landing as if it's stationary how well, is the plane blind, he's probably hour. not going to get to the equator no, no, he's blind in the air, right? He can still fly the plane, but the storm has made him completely off course. The, the, the air control station is down, right? These are, these are emergency situations that all, every pilot would be trained to deal with, right? He doesn't have any course. He's just going to get to the equator, and he needs to be going 1,000 miles an hour to be in tangential sync with the Earth. How would that happen? Okay, let's say, let's say the right engine is slightly, uh, has slightly more, more thrust than the left engine. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to veer. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to overcompensate. No, he doesn't know that. He's flying blindly. He doesn't know uh, that uh, the, the thrusts are not exactly balanced. Well, he could. Well, he could because you know, he could he even have a course he, because he would we're know. We're talking about the dynamics. We're talking about a pilot knows the feel of the plane. He knows his feel. He would know no, if he's no. going thousand miles an hour sideways. He, he has a he good. That. He's been in the he's he, been in the air many years. He knows if he accelerates to four hundred miles an hour, what it feels like to accelerate to four hundred miles an hour. He has that please, feeling, you know. Even though you can't please. completely feel every plane's movement, let he knows what it feels to like to go plane. forward. But if he was going a thousand miles an hour sideways, not only would he feel it, he would know it, and he would have to do it on purpose. Okay, let me respond to the first claim before you make like a, a list of other ten. So you just said. That he'll know he he's accelerating up to a thousand miles per hour. 
No, he doesn't have yeah. any, any. They have no instrument that re, re, uh, reads the airplane speed relative to inertial frame. All he right. has are instruments that measure the airplane speed relative to the air uh, and relative to the uh, references on the ground, like radar and that kind of stuff. So this emergency, but you pointed, but you pointed out All yourself that like, he wasn't following on the a ground path. He's following, following blind. There's a chance he could be out of sync with that tangential velocity. These are the emergency type of things yeah, that he would need to know. I, I just mentioned. I just mentioned another thing that would make him out of sync. And all you address the oh the airplane the, the pilot would know that that's not true. It happens on the end. Uh, if the thrusts are not actually balanced. The way you know that is the airplane is getting off course. So, but if he's flying blindly, he has no idea of the course that the airplane is taking. He has oh, no, no he idea of going south. Are taking place. He knows How he's going he know south. That? Well, there's there's mechanisms to know for him to know. He's going. He could, he could be looking at a star. He decided to use the stars because he knows well, he that, has that a stars now. south. So he has well, a course he, now. He just knows that if that general any... direction is south. The general Please. direction he's going in is south because he knows the stars. That's all. Please, if he's just slightly now deviating to the right, and he noticed the the let's say the the star that should be due south is actually not due south. He's gonna correct for that. So now you're giving me back the mechanism that I need. No, I'm just saying he knows the stars and he knows he's generally headed south, but he doesn't have any kind of course correction or anything. He's just trying correct. to get to the south. If, if, if any, if any effect, uh, uh, Coriolis or wind or whatever, if any effect, then uh, takes him off course or starts to give him a a sideways velocity relative to the wind. Uh, he's going to have to correct for that. Otherwise, he's not going to make it to the equator. Well, regardless, though, bacon, it still doesn't work. I don't know why I'd say, by, by making an example of something that's going to make him veer off course like the winds, you know, or whatever, it doesn't matter because you have to have a mechanism, dude. You can't just say the plane is thought to be 823 miles an hour sideways. It has to be an actual mechanism that does that. And he's not doing it at, by staying on course because he could be going only 200 miles an hour cruising speed or 400 okay, miles an hour cruising speed. And either let, way, see. you're saying he's going 823 miles an hour sideways, whether he's going 400 or 200 forward. So how are you saying he's going 800 sideways no matter how fast he's going forward? I'm not saying he's going 800 miles an hour no matter how fast he's going forward. Let's well, see the fire let, 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 let me take out uh, every single effect ordered during Coriolis. Let's start at 60 north going towards the equator. So the, the velocity at 60 north. Hour. Sorry, 30 north. So the velocity at 30 degrees north, that's 500 miles an hour. Okay. And he, go, he wants to go to the equator. There's zero yeah. wind and the uh, airplane, all the thrusts are perfectly symmetrical. He just aims at due south and just goes, right? Okay. No wind, no anything. So on if the Earth was rotating, if there was Coriolis, uh, then he's going to start to have a velocity relative to the surface in the westwards right. direction, right? So he's going to start to drift in in the westwards right. direction. If right. there's no wind, now well, he's, he's going. Not technically, wait, hold on, wait. Okay, technically, if there's no wind or anything like that, he's not actually veering. It's just the Earth moving underneath him. That that's makes right, it look right. like a westward move, right? That's the Coriolis that's right. fact, right? That's right. So now there's a difference in the eastward velocity between the airplane and the air. The air is faster in the eastward velocity than the airplane. That difference is going to blow well, the airplane eastwards because there's a difference well, in actually, the eastward velocity between them. No, well, no, it doesn't work that way. Winds go in all directions. No, no, no. In this case, there's no wind. Remember, zero wind. Oh, so you're wind. thinking, so you're okay, but you're thinking because when the, when the wind is when there's no wind, it's in perfect sync, which would cause wind when the when the plane's not in sync. Yeah. <laughs> That's obvious. Conceptually, conceptually, that would have to happen, but you know, they, obviously, they don't they don't have that happen. That would that would be something they, they would know for sure. Because they, they don't they don't have a they don't have a stronger headwind because they're going eastward. I mean westward. Planes don't say, oh, I'm going westward against the spin, so I got all this air blowing me backwards. Yeah, if, if you would work out how much uh, eastward wind the airplane would get, 
that's like much less than the threshold of regular wind against an airplane. So you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between it wind because he's deviating due to Coriolis or just regular wind. You would be able to tell the difference because when you get to the equator, if you're if you're a hundred miles an hour off or two hundred mm-hmm. miles an hour off or even five miles an hour off, you're gonna see the earth moving separately from your plane backwards. No, but you you're now you're ignoring uh the the effect I just mentioned that would happen through no, the but, whole course. You're just teleporting it to the equator. But even if it did work that way, which I which I'll still argue it wouldn't work that way, are you saying that the pilot is putting his faith that the wind is gonna push his plane back and the eastward tangential velocity sink? That's how no. the pilots they're just they're just putting their faith in the wind? No. I'm saying what, if he what, goes what doing due now? south. If he goes due south. Yeah. And there's no wind, and there's the, the uh, uh, there's perfect symmetry in the air, uh, in the in the in the aircraft, and no he starts to deviate. No, no wind for Earth. There's no wind. Oh, but in there's the wind for the planes. So you're saying that the the wind for the only plane wind. would only be one direction. If there was no wind, there would only be wind in one direction for the plane. Yeah, the the airplane measures its velocity relative to the atmosphere, right? That's how we measure the wind. That's the wind right, against the airplane. Dude, it's, okay, it's, so the, be, if the, there's if no the wind, ground were moving, ground. There would have to, so if the ground were moving, he wouldn't be able to, his ground speed would be totally a different thing because he'd be, move, he'd be measuring his own speed towards the equator and he would have to know how fast the, the, the tangential velocity is at the equator because if there's any chance that he'd be out of sync eastward, that would be a problem. And there's no measurement of that and no awareness on the pilot's part. So therefore, right there, we know the Earth isn't moving. Or there'd be, there'd be, emergency uh, measures to make sure that this never happened. That doesn't make sense. Like, we were getting to exactly the reason why you wouldn't have to worry about that. Even if you're saying the winds. Scenario. You're saying the winds are going to blow him faster eastward? No, n- no. Assuming no wind. When I say it's going to yeah. blow him, that's the just wind relative to the airplane. Because the airplane is now, now have a different velo- eastward velocity than the air. Which means the air is not in sync with the airplane. So there's eastwards wind. Okay, so, so it's going to blow the, the airplane what's towards making east. the plane twice as fast? What's, what's blowing mm-hmm. the plane twice as fast if it's not a wind? Oh, it's not blowing twice as fast at any particular moment. No, the plane has to be going eastward. twice as fast eastward. The plane has to be going tangentially twice as fast as where it started out from. Yeah, but it this is... It has to it has to get twice as fast as an end result at the end of the full course. As soon as it moves, as, as soon as it take off from thirty degrees north, it, it's going to have a different velocity than the atmosphere. That's going to be perceived as uh, eastwards wind. That's going to add up to the eastward velocity. Of course, it's not going to add up to a thousand miles per hour immediately, but it's going to constantly add up to that. I don't think it's going to reach a thousand miles per hour. So I think if an airplane in an, there's no zero wind and the aircraft is perfectly symmetrical it just goes due south I don't think he would actually uh, sink with the earth's surface uh, but he wouldn't simply maintain the 500 miles per hour because that's ignoring the effect of the atmosphere it's ignoring that the air is going to start blowing the airplane as soon as it's out of sync with the atmosphere Okay, so that in that scenario, you're saying he puts the faith in the atmosphere, wind, to move him sideways faster? There's no pulling faith. I'm not sure where you're getting this from. Well, I mean, if he's just if he's just flying to the, to the south without a course, and he's just going to get there and land wherever he wants, right? He knows, he's, he knows he's headed there. He's dead reckoning, right? He knows he's going mm-hmm. to the south, right? He's not worried about any kind of rotation, but he knows he's going to land on the earth as if it's stationary. What's going to make him go twice as fast eastward? I'm sorry, I got distracted. Say that again? He's just dead reckoning straight to the uh, equator, right? Dead reckoning? Yeah, like say he has a star when he starts off, right? It's he's going to follow that, 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 that southward star, right? He's going, to, he's going to take into account the star moving 15 degrees an hour. And he's going to know that he's dead reckoning for the city that he was, that he knows the city that he's going to prove the, the eastward rotation. In fact, he knows the city that he's headed for, right? Would be, that, would be directly south, would be directly south of where he started from, right? So now he's going to head straight south. He's going to go there, but somehow he's going to be moving eastward 
fast, twice as fast, but he went in one straight line south to where the city would have been, but it's not going to be there because of the rotation. He's trying to prove the, the concept, right? Prove that the earth moved. Now, if the city's there, then we know that it, there's no rotation because he just went dead reckoning straight there, where he would have to veer left to keep up with the city that's moving faster than he was when he started out with. If he's not veering left to keep up with that city, then there's no movement of the earth. He's got a star that he's focused on. He's moving dead reckoning. He's not going to, he's going to stay in that line with that star and he's not going to move south. He's not going to move east or west at all. He's going straight to the equator, right? He's not going to allow the plane. He's going to, he's going to correct for anything that blows on the plane. Now, when he gets to the, to the equator, how do we know that he's moving twice as fast sideways to keep up with the tangential velocity of the earth so he can land as if it's stationary? What's the mechanism that would make that happen? Do you understand that the air is moving with the Earth? Oh, well, I'd rather just talk to Bacon. This is a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not. I'm not talking to you but, tonight, Don. But he's off. I'm not talking to you. I'm not he's talking to you, Don. So not, we've already gone through all the scenarios. Please don't make it a long conversation. That everybody else has to listen to. Does it mean I'm I not going to talk to you? Like I know about the air supposedly moving with the Earth, but I got Bacon right where I want him. Bacon, what's the answer? He's dead reckoning. He said this, I can take a place in the south. No. Then I'm out. Bacon, okay. you gave up? You gave up, Bacon? No, you don't have an answer? I'm here. He's going I'm here. dead reckoning. No, he that, he's dead I reckoning, it, right? No. Dead reckoning from the beginning to the end of the flight. He's dead reckoning to the South Star that he knows is right in line with where he wants to land. I don't the think you know dead reckoning, but I think fast. I get what you mean with that. Yeah, he's going directly south. And he's going to maintain his direct southward position by looking mm -hmm. at the star yeah. in front of him and keeping on course with that. Even though it's 15 degrees movement of the star, he's going to keep that in mind. He's going to go directly south, right? Now, he needs to be going twice as fast sideways, we agreed on, to keep up with the tangential velocity because he only started with 500 miles an hour. What, make, what makes it so that the pilot doesn't have to worry about any of that? He can just always land as if it's stationary. What, how, does, how is that at all possible for the pilot to not realize that the plane accelerated twice as fast sideways by the time he got there? And what would be doing that? What's the mechanism that makes that happen? Well, as I was explaining you, as soon as he take off, he gets to a latitude. <clears throat> sorry, he gets to a latitude where he, the ground is moving faster than he was. The atmosphere is also moving faster than he he was. So if we assume he simply continues on that velocity and doesn't gain the necessary sideways velocity, he's going to experience winds towards that direction. Because the, as air, the atmosphere is moving faster than he is. That's going to be perceived as a wind blowing him eastwards. So yeah, he, but, you'd have but, to... But, then when I, but when I said he puts his faith in the winds, you said, no, he doesn't have to do that. That's not putting faith on the wind. That's what I'm telling you would happen on a rotating Earth. That's not the airplane having faith that that's going to happen. Well, no, but I mean, he needs to be, he, has, he needs to have faith that he's going to be in perfect tangential velocity in sync with the eastward rotation so he can assume to treat the Earth as stationary. What's going to make him in his mind, if he knows this, if he thinks about it like this is happening and he doesn't think about it like most pilots are just trained to treat it as stationary and not worry about the movement or the curvature, right? So how can a pilot just not even worry about the movement of the curvature and just fly there and land? What, what is he putting his faith in to make sure that he's going to keep up with this eastward rotation? What if he's worried about being out of sync when he's there? What's, what's he putting his faith in? It doesn't matter what he's worried about. The fact is, if he, for some reason, manages to keep the eastward velocity he had, he's going to get increasingly faster winds blowing him towards the eastward direction. So either he uh, aims the airplane a little more to the left, and eventually syncs up with the atmosphere and stops uh, getting that much of uh, sideways wind, or he's simply not going to be able to fly the airplane. No, you know the airplane has I'm to fly. You, like if you're like you're you're talking to a brand new pilot, right? He's just always assumed it's stationary, and then he's he's realized that there would be a tangential difference, right? And now he's talked to me or somebody like me, and he's all worried that he's going to be out of sync with the Earth. What are you going to tell that pilot to make him feel like it's safe just to fly there and not worry about your course, follow that star, get down to the south, wherever, wherever find a place to land, wherever you want to land when you get there, you'll be fine. How are you going to guarantee that he's going to be okay with doing that if he thinks that there's going to be a 
eastward tangential velocity of 500 miles an hour he has to make up. I don't have to anticipate that. The fact that... Well, I'm just uh, asking. It's, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a thought experiment. How would you explain to that pilot that he should put his faith in this and not worry about anything? He'll be fine. What should he put his faith in? Oh, one second. Give me a minute here. I'll be right back. Just, just, just a thought experiment, but you definitely don't want me to answer. No, I don't want you to answer because you don't know anything about uh, the Earth or the movements or any models. You don't know anything, Don. Just stick sure to like regular me not models. knowing stuff that gets you, you triggered. Stuff, that's right. Right. Yeah, that's it, pretty much. You act like you know stuff and you don't actually know stuff. Oh, I had to leave for a minute. Okay. okay so you were asking... What are you going to tell this pilot to put his faith in to make sure that he's safe to just go down there and don't worry about your eastward tangential velocity? It's going to be twice as fast by the time you get there. What's the mechanism you're going to explain to him does that for the for the um, plane to be in sync with the Earth? The same that I've been explaining to you for the past two hours. He, okay, just do it. Say it to him. You're a new pilot. You're just explaining to him. He doesn't need a course. No, he's, he's just going to fly to the south and be able to land. He have to tell There's the nothing pilot. to worry about. He's going to follow that star. wherever, Whatever city's below him, he's going to find a place to land in that city. How are you going to make sure that he's okay to do that? He's already you said you don't have to. What makes? Yeah, I don't have to explain Don, anything. I don't need your help. Un un unless, unless, unless he's he wants like, to know. Well, he's talked to me uh, and he's um, like, "Wait, I gotta be moving twice as fast by the time I get there sideways. What's gonna make my plane do that?" He's not spoke to you. Just explain it to him as if I were him. Okay, everything again, will be, everything will be fine, mate. Just fly the plane. Even, even if it's for some reason you manage to keep your tangential velocity. Intact uh, as you get closer and closer to the computer. work anyway. Yeah, like even if you manage to keep the 500 original that from being on the ground, is what you're saying? Yes, even if that happened. Okay. Uh, as you yeah, get closer and closer to the equator, uh -huh. uh, you're going to experience stronger and stronger winds blowing you eastwards. So that's going uh -huh. to accelerate you towards the eastward anyway. Ah, uh, okay. So you're saying put your faith in the winds. That's what I said. You're I telling him to put his faith not, in the wind. It's not a, the winds will blow you twice as fast sideways. What would happen on a rotating globe? That's, that's not putting your faith on it. That's what would happen on a rotating Earth. Yeah, it's just... It's but it's it's yeah, but I mean, he has to depend... He has to, he has to think of the air it's moving him twice as fast sideways. No. Or, or it could just be stationary and he just lands when he gets there because it's stationary. Or he has to think about no. the winds actually pushing him twice as fast sideways. Right? No, Is that what you're no, saying? None of that. That's what he said. No, I, I listened to him. Well, it's just the concept that the air is going to move him twice as fast sideways, but no pilot would ever put the faith in winds moving him sideways. You don't have to. You just fly normally and you go around Earth. Yeah, because it's, it's not moving. That's how you don't have to. In you would mind. have to if it were moving. It's not in my mind. No, if it was moving, you would have to have your faith in something because you're going to be right. moving twice as fast sideways. Let's say the, guy, the pilot only flies there 200 miles an hour rather than 400. How are you explaining that the pilot's going to be moving a thousand miles an hour, no matter how fast he goes forward? You By the time he gets there, he's going to be moving twice as fast. fast sideways. Sideways. It's not even true, yeah. except in relativity. Uh, don't, Don. We don't need your help. But are you giving up bacon? You're not. If you're giving up. I'm not talking to Don about this because he doesn't know what he's talking about. We already established 500. Bacon agreed. He started with that conserved momentum. Then he said that if he's going to the equator, he'd have to be going a thousand eastward, which should be Bacon's sideways. Been assuming you in terms of relativity. What? Did you hear me? He's been he's been humor, humoring me because it all has to do with relativity. Yes. Well, then you don't even know what Bacon's thinking. Why are you trying to talk for him? So I listened to him for the last half an hour since I got. Did up. you give up, Bacon? Did you give up? I want to hear. Oh, I have to because it's four a.m. here. I should okay, be. Okay, so you give up. You're saying that the the, the winds are going to move him is your only answer. The uh, wind push my, that my, that was my last answer. That was my only answer. Well, yeah, you're saying the winds would have to be, you have to tell the pilot, the winds are going to be moving you eastward, even though there's winds moving in all directions. There's, well, yeah, there's wind moving on, uh, going all directions, but they're not a thousand miles an hour wind, right? So if you maintain well, no. the... It, yeah, if, if but something's got to move him exactly twice as fast sideways. Some, some wind has got to move him without him even knowing it, twice as fast sideways, which is ridiculous, by the way. But that's not, that doesn't happen, and we would know if there's a wind that's strong moving him twice as fast sideways. That would be identifiable. The pilot would know that. 
the pilot would know that he'd put his faith in it and he'd be like, Oh great. I'm glad that wind happened. Otherwise I'd be out of sync with the earth. You get my that's, point. That's not some wind. That wind is just how he perceives his airplane, not having the same tangential velocity as the atmosphere. <laughs> that's not a specific wind. Like if so the airplane was flying. Okay, so he, he's flying through an area where, there, where he knows there's no wind, right? And he's like, oh, but I got a sideways wind. That must mean I'm out of sync with the atmosphere. There's no pilot ever thinks about it that way. The pilot just yeah, thinks just by point to point. He never thinks about yeah, the earth moving. He never accounts for the earth moving. The wind never accounts for it because the earth isn't freaking moving. That's the only way it would work, Bacon. Yeah, they, they would never have to think about it like that because, as I said before, this actually happens continuously. So you never get to a point where you have your initial velocity uh, main, uh, preserved and you start to feel in this huge wind. You never get to that point because that's already happening gradually the whole time. No, we would see that. We would have. We would have very. We would have that. That would be in the books, dude. We'd be like, look, when and oh, every pilot, of course, they would be like, now you know if there's no wind because you have just an eastward wind that's accelerating your plane twice as fast. And good thing for that. Otherwise, you're going to be out of sync with the Earth when you're trying to treat it as stationary when you land. Good um, thing we have faith in the wind moving one direction. That's insane and ridiculous and false. It's, uh, it's stationary. It's, the only way he can land is what I see. Be sure that he can land is stationary with a different tangential velocity is if it's actually stationary. What would be the difference in how you would train a pilot to treat the Earth? I, this is a closing question, so you can go. What would be the difference in how you would train a pilot to fly over a stationary Earth as opposed to a spinning ball or a fagin? How would you train no. the pilot differently? That's my argument. No, that's the answer that's I want. That's argument. the answer I want. Yeah, I'm agreeing. That's the answer I wanted. And that's what you have to argue, and it makes you look ridiculous. There would be so many dynamic no differences. The dynamics would be completely different, which we just went through for three hours. You so say you've misunderstood the road right. again. No, I know so because it's just like a stationary flat the, earth. If the earth, if the globe is the exact same as a stationary flat earth, then we're why are we even planes. arguing? It's similar, yeah. When you fly a plane, it's just a stationary flat Earth. But if you want to think about it as a globe, you can. Yes. <laughs> That's like everything else. We can think of it as a ball, but there's no curvature and there's no everything's just level and stationary. Yes. You can yes. think of it as the model with the ball going around the Earth or our geocentric turning Earth, but none of that matters. Full circle here, Bacon. And no, if you can, if you, you can, can get rid of the um, movement problem, if you can say, look. The reason we train pilots to fly as if it's stationary is that it's actually stationary. Now, they don't dip the nose down because of the gravity. You'd be free of that problem if you just give up the rotation with your geocentric as long earth. As you get that you wouldn't no have to worry about people is. like me coming up and calling bullshit. As long as you get I the know, plane still I work. Know. That's all that matters. So are you I done, Bacon? I know you disagree with that. You're done. But it didn't actually provide a good reason for why there should be a difference in training between a rotating earth and a stationary earth. Well, because like, like, what if he gets off course and he's fine? Like, I mean, if he's not in, and uh, he's out of sync with the eastward tangential velocity, that would be one of the problems, right? That could happen regardless of the Earth spinning or not. What? You don't get that could happen thing. regardless on what the Earth is spinning. Like in the example, no, 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 I'm like, talking about the spinning of the Earth, the tangential velocity of the spinning Earth compared to the tangential velocity eastward of the plane in motion. That's the difference I'm talking about. Yeah, as, as I'm saying, and those aren't always uh, those aren't all, always automatically in sync because of winds. Uh, in long step, I'm, mate, that's what they call it. You can as think as of it, more, but there's the, it wouldn't be so perfectly in sync that you could just train the pilot and never worry about it. Oh uh, well. And well. and even on top of that, even if the winds did blow the even if the winds did blow the plane twice as fast sideways, they that's don't. an extra 500 miles an hour that the winds got to carry the, the plane as it's landing. In some perpendicular backward sideways direction. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Yeah, because it's stationary, Don. That's why it doesn't happen. Yeah, because the atmosphere moves with Earth. Doesn't it? Yeah, so your atmosphere is pushing the plane twice as fast sideways no. as it's landing and at, at an angle that's backwards and sideways to never. the rotation. Back to that. Yeah, never, because it's stationary, Don. It's the only way it could work. And I.